We are in Columbus, California. We're just finished installing a 40 gallon rain water heater out in the garage. And um, let's start at the top. What we did is we replaced the vent piping, number one. Piece all the way up. The only thing I don't like about this is the uh, existing dual wall B vent that's in the attic is, pu is pushed up about two to three inches into the attic space. It's sealed up at the roof flashing where the pipe penetrates the roof. So we couldn't pull it down. We usually like to pull it back down and get it on top of the ceiling bucket, but we couldn't move it. So it's sealed up top, it's fine. We just took and crimped that and slid it through. Normally that just penetrates about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half into the ceiling bucket. It's up there about two to three inches. So anyways, piece of pipe is new. Two offset 90s, brand new. And those are straight from Home Depot. And then the diverter, uh, draft diverter comes with the water heater. Uh, down the tank we've got a brass coupling and nipple on both sides. What we like to do on this is we've got uh, heat traps on the top of these nipples. They're plastic and the top of them are, are uh, the diameter is slightly smaller than the washers on these connectors. And so what happens is, is the washers kind of slip over the, the edges and you get leaking and you have to over tighten them. So we just spend about, I don't know, 10 bucks on each side for brass fittings. The reason we use brass is it flows very well. It doesn't break down like iron pipe. And your existing home is already bra uh, copper, and copper and brass, there's no conflict with flow. You don't get uh, any, any uh, breaking down of the difference in metals. So uh, anyway, so <clears throat> up here at the top, quarter turn ball valve, quarter turn off, quarter turn on, and that's Watts ball valve, top of the line, brass, and then a brass nipple. Falcon stainless steel connector, it's 3 quarter by 15. It's a full .725 inside diameter. It's the biggest in the industry. We like these supply lines. Same thing all over on the other side. There's already a copper mail adapter in place there, so we just screwed a, another connector on there down to the tank, and that's a 15 as well. So right now, you can see, or I can see anyways, I don't know if you can see on the video, but no weeping, no dripping, no spraying, and that's good. So, But you do want to monitor this. You know, Keep an eye on this stuff, come out occasionally. Get up here and look at the tank. You know, look around here and make sure that you don't, you're not developing any water. As this water heats in the tank, and start, especially starts going through the hot side, everything kind of softens up, you know, the gasket in here and whatnot. So just keep an eye on this for water. Any signs of uh, even just a, a hint of moisture up here, a little dripping, whatever, give us a holler. We'll come out and get that tightened up for you. But that's the top side. Relief valve came with the water heater. It's installed, it was installed down, so we just turned it to the side, put a little nipple in there. This never holds water, so another Falcon stainless steel connector over to the existing point of connection. It's a discharge line in the wall. This guy, technically you could pop this off once a year just to make sure it's working. It opens up and releases pressure and or temperature in the tank. Uh, that's a safety feature, so that, uh, you know, probably right in the book it'll tell you once a year, pop it off to make sure that it opens and closes. If it gets stuck to close and you have closed and you have too much temperature pressure, this thing launches in the air. And you don't want that. So I've never seen one actually do that except for in training videos. So, But it is a safety feature, so you can do that once a year, as well as drain the water heater and get all the debris out. Upper third, we have the adjustable straps. Lower third, we have the adjustable straps. Down here, we've got the new um, corrugated supply line that goes over the control valve. So that's on. Pilot is lit. Burner is on. We've got it on hot, which is approximately 120. Please adjust the water in the home according to your needs. I know you've got little ones in the home and um, you want to make sure that you don't get too hot of water. You can read right here, scalding risk increases with hotter water. So make sure if you turn it up, you don't have any problems, uh, you know, with the little ones being around faucets and get scalded. So anyways, uh, everything that's good here outside of that, this installation is done.